I can't light this cigar evenly right now. There's a breeze. I don't have my Zippo. Hello. Welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to discuss stuff and occasionally even things. Today is a pleasant Sunday smoke. Once again, now that I'm outside, I can see that I'm horribly backlit against the sky. You can kind of see me? Hopefully it's not too dark. We'll see if I can fix that in post a little bit. Is that better or worse? No, it's not going to stay that way. I don't know. Anyway, you guys will have to put up with it. This is the first day in a very, very long time that it is not having some sort of torrential downpour out here right now. Out here right now, going on right now. Um, it has been crazy lately, the weather. I keep mentioning over and over and over again, and it's probably getting tiresome for you guys to hear, but there is the stereotype that the Pacific Northwest has a lot of rain. And it does. But it is not a lot of rain. It is a lot of days with rain. It rains pretty much all the time from September to late May, early June. Um, but the accumulation isn't that much. New York gets more rain than the Pacific Northwest does in accumulation. But in terms of days with rain, days without the sun, we've got you all beat. But lately, my God, it has been the second global flood going on right now. Expecting arcs and two by two animals tromping around everywhere. Lots of rain. Um, can't talk. Low, what am I trying to say? Low level flooding in the lowlands, rivers are cresting, things like that. Um, we've been getting soggy, inundated. So today is the first time I, or first opportunity I've had to get out and actually smoke a cigar, which is what I'm doing right now. This is a Padron 2000. I know you guys all get tired of me smoking the same guitar, gu guitars, cigars every single time that I smoke a cigar, but I'm not tired of them and I don't review cigars on the channel. And so to me, once I found something that I like, I stick to it. I pretty much the only reason I'm smoking all these different pipe tobacco blends is because I review them. If I were not reviewing them for the channel, I would probably just pick a few and smoke those all the time. Because once I found something I like, I stick to it. I go to the same Goldurn coffee slash bagel shop every single weekend and I get one of two or three different meals every time I go there. I like it, it tastes good. And I know that when I get it, I will enjoy it every single time. There's something to be said for variety, yes. And occasionally I do mix things up. But when you found something you like, stick to it. Speaking of going and getting coffee, this is from my favorite bagel place. And it is the same kind of coffee. They brew the same kind of coffee there that I use at home. And it is this local coffee brewer, not brewer, but roaster called Lotus Coffee. And I have gotten so, speaking of me, you know, being unwaveringly um, loyal to a certain thing, a product that I like, I really love Lotus Coffee. <clears throat> but it is a small local brewer why do I keep trying to say brewer? There's so many breweries around here. It is a small local roaster. And as far as I know, they supply several different coffee, coffee shops around here, local coffee shops. But I don't know of any store that sells their beans um, in retail. And the only place you can get their beans is two or three different coffee shops will sell their beans by the pound bag. And I have gotten so devoted to these beans that I won't drink any other coffee. I mean, I, if I have to, if I'm out with a friend or something and we go to a coffee shop that doesn't serve Lotus, that's fine. But when I'm making my own coffee, I get whole beans, I grind them, I use a French press, I'm very particular about how my coffee is going to be, and I really like these beans. And I ran out on Tuesday. I don't know what, what was with me. I should have remembered to pick some up during the weekend. Um, the, the bagel place that I go to is one of the places that sells the beans. And I would normally buy a bag there if I knew I was running low and I was getting my bagel on the weekend. But I forgot and coffee just went up my nose. Weren't we just talking about this? The freaking coffee lids just shot right up my nose. Ah, that was last week. Anyway, I did not want to snort my coffee, but I guess that's one way to mainline caffeine. I ran out of coffee. It was Tuesday, I think, was the last day. And I normally make, in the morning, I grind enough beans to, my French press will make two 
basically like 16 ounce cups, um, which is funny because my, my French press says on it that it'll, it will make four cups of coffee, but that's for Europeans um, who would consider four ounces a normal amount of coffee to drink. Or no, no, it says it'll make eight cups, yeah. So four ounces is a normal amount. Americans think 16 ounces is a normal amount of coffee. This is about a 16 ounce cup here. Anyway, it makes two American sized cups of coffee. I put one in a mug, I drink it in the morning. Hey, motorcycles. Oh, get a frickin' muffler, buddy. I put one in a mug and drink it in the morning and the second one I put in my travel mug and I take it with me and I drink it throughout the day. Anyway, all that preamble aside, I ran out on Tuesday. Wednesday morning, woke up, went, Dah! when I remembered that I didn't have my coffee. And I wasn't gonna just go buy some somewhere, like a pre-made cup. For some reason, I'm kind of a all or nothing kind of guy. If I can't get the coffee that I wanted to drink that morning, then I'm not gonna drink coffee. And so I didn't have any caffeine, it's fine. I don't need the caffeine necessarily. But I think I was a bit irritated that day. Um, after work that day, I went to go try to buy coffee and the bagel place where I normally get it closes early, it closes at about four every day. So I wasn't able to go there. So I went to this other coffee shop that normally carries the beans. They were sold out. So I was very disappointed. There was the only other place I could think of that carried the beans. Next morning, it's like, okay, I don't have any coffee. I'm going to try, I guess, to make tea and make do with that. I'm not a huge fan of tea. Not my favorite thing in the world. To me, it's just like some hot water with leaves thrown in it. It just kind of barely stains it. It doesn't really taste like anything. I don't like it that much, but whatever. Um, I look through my, my cupboards. I don't have any black tea. I thought I had black tea, no black tea. All I had was green tea. <laughs> it's just so disappointing and it's so stupid but it's so funny how certain things like this can really impact your day when you've got a routine you've got a set thing that you do every single day and that makes you feel normal it's this sense of kind of safety your routine you feel like you're doing the things that you should be doing and I wasn't able to do that and then the same day that day again I went after work still sold out of the coffee finally Yesterday, after work, they had coffee. So that was three, what was it, three work days without having my coffee, without having my routine in the morning of drinking my cup and then taking another cup with me. But thankfully, I've got my Lotus coffee. This is Lotus coffee. I didn't make this myself, but it's close enough that it does the job. Speaking of coffee, I know we've been kind of coffee heavy the last couple weeks. Um, last week I had my little rant about the coffee lids like this, the to-go lids. Speaking of that, <laughs> I appreciate all the advice and helpful tips that people give me in the comments, but uh, when I do a rant like that, you probably shouldn't take it too seriously. I'm probably exaggerating a little bit, because um, I had a lot of people saying like, well, why don't you bring your travel mug to the coffee shop and have them pour it in that? Yes, thank you, I know, but I was, I was sort of joking. Anyway. Um, we've been talking a lot about coffee, mentioned tea today as well, and I've always been kind of curious about the fact that the British, which, uh, you know, America was once a colony of England, much of our culture, our laws, many, many cultural aspects in America come from England or the British Isles. One thing we did not pick up, or something I guess maybe we expelled, was the love of tea. And sure, plenty of people drink tea here, but it is not anywhere near the obsession that the British people have with tea. And when you think about, you know, the Boston Tea Party in the 18th century, one of the main sort of uh, the, the matchstick that sort of set the Revolutionary War ablaze was the rallying cry of no taxation without representation because they were trying to tax tea imports. So obviously at one point, the British or the American colonists really cared about tea but uh, we don't really anymore. And we have picked coffee. In the never-ending debate of coffee versus tea, America is firmly on the side of coffee. The British are firmly on the side of tea. And I don't know why. 
I find it very interesting. I know that, you know, in times past, tea was said to have all these medicinal properties, um, and it sort of became ingrained in the culture of the UK, but we came from that culture, and obviously many other different ethnic groups have come to America and sort of changed the melting pot. But why did we lose the tea thing, and why did we latch so strongly onto the coffee thing? I don't know anyone in the US that drinks tea daily at all. I can't think of a single person, but I know almost everyone, almost everyone I know drinks coffee daily. I'm sure you already know where I firmly come down on this issue. Coffee is better than tea. I'm sorry, it just is. It's funny, of course, when I mentioned the coffee lids last week and I was talking about how I like to drink coffee throughout the day, like the same cup of coffee and how Europeans often will sit down in their cafe and just drink their coffee in one setting. Of course, I had to get a comment from a European saying, ugh, that watered down, what was it exactly? That watered down diluted stuff you call coffee isn't really coffee. We drink espresso here. Um, actually, what we drink is really coffee. What you drink is a modern invention. The actual original coffee was pretty much the way I brew my coffee now. So I know maybe you prefer espresso, you like espresso. Um, you don't always have to take this weird superior tone. I know that a lot of people think Americans are stupid. A lot of a lot of people throughout the world like to pick holes in the things that the U.S. does. I don't know if it's from some weird sense of inferiority or something. I don't know. But coffee is coffee. Coffee is good. I don't think it makes you superior if you prefer espresso, and I don't think it makes me superior if I prefer coffee. Brewed coffee. Um, let's just all relax a little bit, shall we? I'm not gonna mention my usual litany of all these upcoming videos that I have going on because frankly, there are just too damn many. I've gotten so many requests to do reviews, people wanting to send me their products. I have several journals on the way, some shoes on the way, quite a few different things. And so these reviews will just be peppered in throughout the weeks and I will let you know when I'm close to releasing one of those videos, but I'm just not gonna list off this whole litany of uh, upcoming reviews, different tobaccos and things like that. I hope you enjoyed the Three Nuns review that I posted last week. As I mentioned, the next review, maybe I didn't mention, the next tobacco review will be Carter Hall. I did procure some. I did do a box opening that we'll post this week, and you can see some of the tobacco blends that I got. Um, so that'll be not this coming week, but the week after. I am going to do a, another Universal Yums box opening. I guess I am listing off a whole <laughs> load of videos that I'm about to do. But one thing I did want to mention, I got a message from my good friend Suffolk Bumpkin. He has a YouTube channel, but he hasn't really been posting much of the YouTube channel. But he wanted me to mention his Instagram account. It is at Smoking Bumpkin, and I will put a link, or I will put uh, an overlay on the video here, at Smoking Bumpkin. It is an Instagram account, and he's a really good photographer. He takes a lot of pictures that involve the pipe smoking hobby, and I think you should check it out. Now, I'm not going to have every person with, like, a weird fetish tumbler or something asking me to talk about it on the channel. I'm not going to do that, but this is a good guy. It's a good Instagram account, and I think you should check it out. There are a lot of people making a lot of noise out here today. I don't know why they can't understand that I'm trying to make a video, and this whole area, I'd say within an acre radius of me, should be kept quiet so I can do that. I'll try to explain it to them after the video is done, but for now I'm going to just try to soldier on. The last thing I wanted to touch on this week, and actually there are a lot of other things that I've written down, but I'm looking at my time code here on the video and I've already gone on way too far. But I mentioned the Nintendo NX last week, and some of my hopes for this new Nintendo console, I haven't had a Nintendo console other than their handhelds for a long time, well, sort of serendipi serendipitously, or coincidentally, after posting that Sunday Smoke, uh, word went out that Nintendo was going to finally reveal the NX console on Thursday morning, 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. They posted a trailer on their YouTube channel and on their website. I will link to that trailer in the description box below if you guys are inter interested. I know a lot of you don't care about video games, but a lot of you do. Um, so you can check that trailer out if you haven't already seen it. But if you do care about video games, you probably have already seen it. Anyway. 
they revealed their new console, and it will be called the Nintendo Switch. And it is basically, eh, it's like a tablet about this size, a big screen with two detachable controllers on either end. It looks to be very powerful for a tablet. We don't know for sure how it stacks up to, you know, the Xbox One or the PS4. I'm guessing it's probably maybe just under the Xbox One and PS4 in terms of graphical capabilities. But for a handheld or a, a device that can be a handheld, can be a mobile console, that's pretty powerful. And basically it's this handheld system that you then can place in a dock in front of your TV and it's on your television. You can play, there's, uh, you can detach the controllers if you want from the device and use those. They also have separate, like a pro controller that's very much like an Xbox One controller in layout. Um, and you can play, they showed various games. There was Zelda, Breath of the Wild, uh, there's an NBA game, Mario Kart, um, a new Mario, 3D Mario game, looks very, very cool. So basically you're getting the full mainline Nintendo console experience, and you can play it just like a normal console on your couch, on your television, or you can just pick it up off the dock and it immediately switches to the screen on the Switch, hence the name, and you can take it with you and it is basically exactly what I hoped it would be. I did not expect Nintendo to release a console trying to compete graphically with, you know, the new, the Xbox Scorpio that is gonna come out next year or the PS4 Pro. Um, I think they, I think that ship is pretty much sailed and what they are trying to do is something unique. Now I know the Wii U was something that they were trying to do that was unique, but it just didn't work very well. This is for games. It's not a weird gimmick. I mean, I guess it is a gimmick in that you can take it with you, but it has controllers. It's not about motion control. I'm sure it probably will have a touchscreen, but they didn't talk about that at all. The trailer was all like young millennials enjoying themselves. There were no kids, there were no families. So I think they're trying to speak to a very specific demographic. It's people in their maybe mid to late 20s, early 30s, who grew up with Nintendo and who have kind of a nostalgia towards Nintendo. Because it's not little kids who know about Nintendo now, you know? I grew up with Nintendo, but a kid who's, or someone who's like 15 now, they don't really have a history with Nintendo. Um, so it makes sense they know that, they should know that their audience has grown, has aged along with them. So anyway, to me, it just seems like a console for playing games. It's gonna be pretty damn powerful for something that you can take on the road. And knowing if, if it really is a merging of their handheld and home console markets into one device, the idea that they're, all their first party Nintendo studios are gonna be focusing on one device is pretty cool to me. And the fact that you'll be able to play every Nintendo game that gets released on that device instead of being like, oh, that's for handheld or that's for the home console, I think is very cool. I do think it will be easier for third parties to develop for this console because it doesn't require the second screen functionality like the Wii U. It doesn't require 3D like the 3DS. Um, you don't have to have any touch controls on there if you don't want. And it's built on an NVIDIA chipset. So it's basically the same chip, uh, the, the same architecture that's used in um, modern NVIDIA GTX graphics, car draft graphics cards. So it's a very familiar architecture. It should be very easy to develop for. And they've already got a very long list of third party developers. Now I don't expect to play Mass Effect Andromeda on this device, but I am cautiously optimistic. The only thing for me is maybe the battery life. If it's, if it's less than four hours, I think that's a problem. Um, but we'll see. Hopefully more information will come out, but I'm actually excited for a Nintendo console for the first time in a long time. And I'm hoping that the promise revealed in the trailer is actually fulfilled. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. March can't come soon enough. I'm also really looking forward to the NES Classic. They're making this tiny little model size version of the original NES preloaded with 30 games that are emulated that you can plug directly into your HDMI in on your television and play these old school Nintendo games with the old school Nintendo controllers. I think it's really cool. Obviously you can get a lot of these games via virtual console on 3DS or the Wii U or whatever. I don't own a Wii U. But having this tiny little package with that retro charm looks just like an NES, um, I think is really cool. So I'm looking forward to getting that. I think that comes out November 11th. 
So I'm probably going to pick up one of those babies too. Cool. Um, I've been rambling on a long time. This is a really long Sunday smoke. Hopefully you guys didn't mind. Look forward to more videos posting throughout the weeks. There will always be more content coming up on the channel. Make sure you subscribe so you will not miss any of it. But until next time, until we meet again, I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a Pleasant Sunday Smoke. I'll see you later.